to start trying to recruit parents to, I guess, have their kids spy on other kids in school, that is some chilling shit, man. It's Ken Harbaugh with the Midas Touch Network, and our new show, The Ken Harbaugh Show, is off to an amazing start. Thank you all so much for making it happen. Today, I want to highlight a story that, at first glance, might seem a bit parochial. On its surface, it's about Ohio and a right-wing agitator who has put a call out for MAGA parents to get kids to spy on each other. That person is Chaya Rychik, the co-founder of an online bullying platform, I don't know how else to describe it, called Libs of TikTok. And she wants kids to become informants, reporting back on so-called wokeness in their communities. This story centers on Ohio, but as you'll see, it has nationwide implications. The right-wing provocateur behind Libs of TikTok revels in the fact that her actions hurt people. When she puts a children's hospital or a school district in her crosshairs, threats of real violence often follow. And yet here she is, posing with a headline about just that, and she's grinning like it's all some kind of joke. I spoke with Ohio State Representative Casey Weinstein about this and about what happens when groups like Libs of TikTok target kids. Casey Weinstein, rep from Ohio, great to have you on the show. You've been on Against All Enemies many times, so not your first rodeo here on the Midas Touch Network, but your first time on the brand new Ken Harbaugh show on the Midas Touch Network. Welcome. I'm very, very honored and thankful to be here, my friend. Um, And thank you for being a voice, uh, a growing voice for sanity and um, normalcy. uh, And, you know, in our in our country, we need it. We need it. For whatever reason, Ohio is once again in the crosshairs. Every few weeks or months, it seems it becomes ground zero in the so-called culture wars. And I wanted to talk to you about this. Um, I don't know what to call it. It's a social media post, but it's a it's an appeal from a right wing ideologue slash troll slash provocateur, Chaya Rachik. Uh, I'll go ahead and read the post in a minute, but it is really very ominous and it's targeting your constituents. Here's what she wrote. I'm looking for parents anywhere in Ohio who have kids in public schools to be eyes and ears on the ground. (laughs) Does that sound like KGB Stasi shit or what? I don't know. Your identity will remain anonymous and protected. Please DM me if you fit this criteria. Talk to us about Chai Rychik, Libs of TikTok, and their MO for uh, for going after school districts who are just trying to take care of kids, especially the most vulnerable kids I- in their uh, in their districts. She is a um, and the page she operates uh, is a bigoted bullying page, and I mean that with every sense and being of the word meaning of the word. Um, they target vulnerable populations, uh, or they target beloved institutions. Um, they target children. Uh, you may have heard of libs of TikTok because they fueled um, bomb threats and uh, and personal threats uh, toward children's hospitals that they claimed were performing wild procedures on kids, which were actually not happening. Um, and I mean, put these institutions and these hospitals uh, at significant risk. You know, these hospitals that are supporting kids, some in NICUs, you know, at, at huge, huge risk, um, both the, the physical building and the people who work there. So they, uh, for many years have, have gone after, um, anything they perceive, um, uh, it's like a QAnon fueled obsession. They have, uh, that there's a, a group of people grooming, you know, they're pedophiles. I'm, I'm apparently one of them because I responded to her post, um, you know, strongly as she was trying to recruit I guess, kids in my district to spy on other kids. Like, I don't know, but her MO is to find, uh, find vulnerable populations and to steer, to steer anger and hatred and threats at them to try to intimidate them. And this is all done via TikTok or most of it. Obviously there's a ton of money behind it. This is not some overnight accidental uh, social media phenomenon. This is nominally a TikTok page, but that has a, a ton of support and amplification in the right-wing media ecosystem that tries to highlight 
what it sees as extreme examples of of liberalism showcases them on libs of TikTok in in a way that is designed to generate anger and hopefully in their eyes revulsion and disgust and direct that anger towards these populations trans kids being the prime target yeah um I, the important thing to note about their amplification is before Elon Musk bought Twitter, they were either banned or, you know, not able to to use that platform. And now not only are they back, they're amplified and sometimes often by him. Um, so, it, you know, it is an absolute hate machine. Um, and it is a, uh, you're, you're right there. They, and, and they go after trans kids, but in this case, Ken, I, I don't know. They seem to be broadening the aperture here. I, I don't know what they're doing, but to to start trying to recruit parents to, I guess, have their kids spy on other kids in school, that is some chilling shit, man. Like that is um, deeply, deeply distressing and disturbing and weird. Uh, and it's something that we um, cannot take lightly because or ignore uh, because her actions have resulted in real threats and potential harm to people. This is real hatred that you said she is using this algorithm and this platform to stir up against people. This is all part of the so-called anti-woke agenda. This crusade uh, manifested in, in these darkest corners of, uh, of the, the right-wing conspiracy world to to take out the the woke power centers, be they in academia or or government or in our in our schools, uh, but I, I think what's very telling is that there really isn't an intellectual basis for any of this. Just trying to hear Chaya Raichik define wokeness is a painful, cringe-inducing experience. Here she is, uh, having had years to come up with a definition of woke failing on the spot. Roll the clip. I mean, like, you can't do anything in peace without this wokeness being shoved down your throat wherever you go. Um, so, do you have a question? I do. <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, how do you define wokeness? Wokeness is the destruction of normality and and um, <laughs> Casey, that is part of the problem the right has. Their entire movement is fueled on anger mm. without any rational underpinnings, without an intellectual basis, at least when it comes to this anti-woke agenda. How, how do you parse that? They believe that anger and hatred will drive turnout. Um, yeah. And it's a it's an election strategy for them. Um, it is it is fear and intimidation. And um, that's what they believe will bring them into power. Um, so they'll have actual real control over people's lives. Um, you know, on the other hand, what we saw from the Democratic Party last week was joy, um, hope, happiness, family, you know, men, um, being real men like Tim Walls um, with empathy, but uh, you know it's it's the contrast couldn't be clearer. But but they are using this this tool of fear and intimidation to try to win an election, and it keeps their people angry, and it allows them to avoid policy discussions because when we talk policy, we talk Project Twenty Twenty Five, which is their blueprint that they're running on, and it's massively unpopular. They don't want to talk about that. They want to keep you angry at, at, at lies that are made up that, you know, this perceived uh, woke agenda that they can't define, uh, but that they can stir up a lot of hatred and anger um, toward. So it is a tool to drive votes without policy because they know their positions are incredibly unpopular, but they know they can whip up hatred and intimidation against people. And the problem for me is that these are the people I serve. These are my constituents. Um, I will not ignore it. Um, and I have always and will continue to stand strong against these, you know, bullies and call them out and just I, I won't, you know, not on my watch. That's what I say. It's no accident that this appeal for parents to recruit their kids to spy on other kids is coming in late August of mm -hmm. an election year 
uh, and we can we can just guess what this is going to lead to. It's going to lead to sensationalized stories about you know horrible things happening happening in Ohio classrooms, all of which is going to be made up or huh? or exaggerated. And it's an electoral strategy. It has nothing to do with protecting kids or helping schools. Well, can inflation's down, crime is down, the economy is doing pretty well, um, immigration. You know, has the the crossings at the border are down, and, and they've kind of run out of fuel on on those lies, and so they're looking for that thing. Like, what's going to be that thing? You know, in past elections, we've seen them try to whip up fear against um, Islamic people fit to terrorism. Uh, immigration is a constant theme, except the facts are are really pushing back on that. So this this nebulous thing, this uh, um, wokeism that they again can't define but allows them to avoid policy and, and whip up turnout um, is, is the lane I guess they're going to choose to go down. Um, and we have to, we have to stand strong. We cannot allow them to go on offense on this. We have to stay on offense and call them what they are, which are bigots, bullies. Um, and we're not going to, we're not going to stand for it. We'll stand up for our, our most vulnerable neighbors and constituents. Bullying seems to be a default these days, even though, I think electorally, it, it tends to backfire. It almost always backfires because Americans don't like bullies. Americans know that the way to beat a bully is to stand up to a bully. But this is reminiscent to me of what they tried to do to Governor Tim Walz's son, Gus, when he stood up and said, that's my dad, after, after Governor Wall said to his family, you are everything to me. And what did they do to Gus Waltz? They called her, They called him, I'll put the tweet up, a blubbering bitch boy. The bullying was, I mean, we, we should have expected it, right? But it, it hurt even not being part of that family. I can't imagine how it felt being part of that family to be on the receiving end of that. But I think it's going to backfire because people see it as bullying, not fighting wokeness or standing up for for manly values or whatever the case may be. Do you have that sense as well that the American people are are fed up with the the bullying that has become such a dominant strain in in the strategy of Republican politics these days? Yeah, it's a good question, Ken, and I am heartened by the response to the inevitable inevitable bullying that we knew because MAGAs can't help themselves. Um, they were shut the heck down. Um, and in some cases, I think in, in almost all cases that I saw of these folks who really went after him, backtracked, deleted tweets, and mm -hmm. Coulter deleted her tweet. Um, it, you know, I was heartened by even on the cesspool that is X slash Twitter, that there were enough people um, who have basic decency to see that this is garbage behavior. I have three kids, young children. The number one thing we tell them is don't be a bully. This is some yeah. basic stuff, man. Um, and most people see right through their behavior, but they're so trained in MAGA to, to generate outrage and hatred of whoever they see as the other. They can't help themselves. Yeah. Well, I, I hope that our response, our rallying around Gus Walls, can be a case study in how you handle this. Because goodness knows there's going to be much more of it coming. We know it's coming to Ohio because of this, uh, I don't even know what to call it, uh, this appeal. What, what What's the word for for a, a provocateur like Chaya Rechik parachuting into your hometown and saying, you know, bring me the worst you have and I'm going to set them loose on your community. That's what she's done. So we need to get ready. We need to be prepared and respond the way we responded when they came after Gus Walls. You know, I, the word bigot, I don't use it lightly, um, but I use it with her because there is just, there's, there's nothing but hatred um, in, in her mission and what she's doing. Um, and I think that, um, yes, she's a charlatan. She's a liar. She is a provocateur. She's a snake oil salesman. She's, you know, probably you know, fueled by uh, rage and outrage. Um, but it's, it's, it's bigotry is what it, it comes down to. Um, yeah. And using lies to, uh, to put people in danger. 
and that's what she seems to uh, it seems to be her mission. For sure. Well, I love your advice, admonition to stay on offense. Uh, we're going to keep doing that here. Casey, thanks for joining us. Thanks again. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.